live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. It is our pleasure to welcome in a dynamic duo of sorts with familial ties. The head coach of BYU women's basketball, Amber Whiting, and her daughter, recent signee, Amari Whiting. Welcome to both of What's you. What's going on? Thank you. Thanks for having us. I said this before the break. I don't think that we've ever had a mother-daughter combo in studio together as guests. Certainly not the head coach of the team that uh, is leading her daughter that, that, and she plays for that team. Like this, this is a unique scenario. So how, how is this for you? Mario, start with you. What, what's it like to play for your mom again, but this time at the Division One level? Um, I don't know. I play for my mom for as long as I can remember. So I guess nothing really changes, just a higher level of competition. But First of all, we don't call, she doesn't call me mom. Yeah. <laughs> we call her coach? coach? No, yeah. we, it's coach, or coach Amber, or Amber, she made that mistake her freshman year in high school. Yeah. And, and you didn't like it. She ran the track the rest of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it weird when you're not coached by your mom? Um, like the, I don't like know. This. I guess a little bit, but my dad coached me uh, this past summer for AU, and I guess it was a little there was, refreshing. I, <laughs> there was one game that uh, <laughs> Trent, Trent loves offense. I'll say that. And you love defense. Yeah, and oh, there was a run and. Trent called timeout and they came to the bench or something. And Mari, she said she came out after and she's like, Well, that was different. Like, he didn't talk about defense. He didn't talk about, and I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> You mean on the sideline? Like, this is unbelievable right now because my girls, I was coaching that team before he took over. Gotcha. And so, so you thought you would establish a certain strategic mm. uh, property here. And Trent's like, No, 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 we're yeah. going to push it. All of us stuff. were really like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> The first tournament was a little bit <laughs> rough, and then after we kind of got used to them. But I remember all of us were in the hotel room, like, just chatting, and we were like, so weird. Like, it's way different than what Amber is, so. Okay, okay so you had committed to Oregon. Um, when your mom gets the job, sorry, when Amber gets the job, there you go. how quickly <laughs> in your, your mind was it like, oh, obviously I got to go play for my mom, or was it a hard decision? Um, it was actually a really hard decision. I'm a pretty loyal person, and I had, like, fallen in love with Oregon, fallen in love with Kelly, and I was set, and that was where my home was. Um, and then when she got the job, I kind of knew. I was like, oh, crap, I'm going to have to <laughs> make a decision. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I just kind of looked back of all, of, like, um, our memories together, and I just was like, I, I, I even, like, pictured all the girls playing for her, and I was like, it kind of made me jealous, and I was like, okay, mm. I know i got to play for more. We like Kelly, too. We got to know him when he was at Gonzaga sure. before he went sure. to Oregon. So he's a good dude. Went to yeah. Rick's. Like, he goes way back. Yeah. Uh, coach, mm -hmm. Amber, yes. clearly Amari <laughs> is a huge part of your recruiting class. And during the break, we were just talking about the successes that you've had. you put together a very exciting roster, albeit there have been some unique challenges that have recently arisen, uh, specifically with Lauren Gustin entering the transfer portal. So... How have you handled that news, and how has it impacted what you're going to do moving forward? Um, Lauren's, I mean, she's a grad transfer, right? So she gets the opportunity to go and look at what's out there. Um, granted, that was hard for me to hear from her. Like, we, we talked on the phone um, quite a bit that day, and it's, it's hard because of what she means to me. And so I just hope she does go explore, goes looks, and I hope that she remembers what we're building here and she remembers the relationships that we have and she remembers how much she means to us here and that that in and of itself will hopefully keep her um, because I really want her back and I want her with us. Um, I can't imagine her with not, I mean, she was the one that was so excited to get in the Big 12 and to do this. Yeah. And so I'm really hoping that she has those feelings and remembers that and comes back. So you're saying there's a chance she could return. It's not a done deal that she is leaving. Yes. Mm. I, I mean, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> is this a challenge as a coach in this? So you, you've entered D1 in an interesting time, NIL and transfer portal and whatnot. You have to re-recruit your players every year. There's no like, yep, I can assume you will be here the whole time. Yeah, no, NIL has changed college landscape for sure um, and changed how, but my job and I'm hoping that uh, I get my players to understand that is, yes, I'm going to develop you and yes, you're going to have a great experience here, but like Amari said, I, I mean, I hope they want to play here. They want to play for us and BYU will never change the way that 
we operate as far as how special it is here. There are certain things that set us apart. So I hope that players, once they get on campus, that's my goal is to get them on campus. So when they come as recruits, you can feel this mm -hmm. is home. You can sure. feel how special this place is. Yeah. So that's where I go in my head. And I know that, I mean, there's some of the best players in the nation that have left their teams. Um, Haley Van Lith, Pow Pow, like, I mean, everybody, right? And so I'm hoping that with all of this change that girls start to, or players start to stay, um, realize how important it is to stay loyal, realize how important it is to build something where they're at, so that the generations coming up, they see that too, right? But somewhere along the line, I think the NCAA has to pull back the reins of this a little bit because it's changing. Sure, sure. All, all the... how, how would you like them to pull back the reins? Ew, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, it's, but it's too because right it really is because okay. you, I mean, they're throwing out like crazy amounts of money to players, right? And so if you're a player, like, I mean, the guys have missed out on a player just now, right? Because of NIL stuff. It's not, it's not okay to be able to compete. And I just look at, we went recruiting this last weekend and I'm kind of like looking around at these players, like, is this legit? Like, am I going to sit here and be able to recruit you the same that I did a year ago or two years ago or three yeah, years ago? Yeah, no, right? Yeah, interesting. Amber and Amari Whiting are with us from BYU Women's Basketball and BYU Sports Nation. Amari, what's this like for you as an athlete to navigate this interesting scenario? You're a transfer yourself. You end up at BYU. Uh, Jenna Asai comes as well, and, and you know her. So how do you feel about navigating all this and the core that you do have at BYU right now? Um, I think it's very tricky for a lot of student athletes. I think, like, yeah, with this NIL money, um, it's, it's kind of hard to be able to, you know, like rule out the schools. I mean, for me and my decision, it was kind of easy um, to narrow out what schools I wanted to go to and what schools I didn't because there's always like um, a way you can tell, you know. But with money, I feel like it's kind of different and it gives you like something else to consider. Um, but for me, I, me personally, I just kind of put that all aside. I didn't really care um, about the money. I just looked about... Like, would I be able to fit this program, um, the coach? Like, would I be able to, you know, be able to bond with them and, like, call the girls my family? So, I mean, especially with Jenna, like, we've been best friends for so long. Like, for yeah. her to come here, I feel like it's it's like a family decision. It's like a feeling that you get, so. And shout out to Jenna, who uh, last week mentioned, uh, you know, a personal issue she's going through it was really uh, open and vulnerable about that, which is, which is uh, tough to do. Um, talk to us about kind of this group. We just showed the, the signing class that you put together, and we have said it multiple times. We are so excited about this group, basically versus every other team on campus. We think you've done the best job so far, right? What, it, what has it taken to put that group uh, together that is really the core of your first recruiting class into the Big 12? Um, I've said it before, last time I was on here, I feel like this group I'll hold way more accountable, right, because they are my first class. But a common thread with all of these players is that they work hard. Their basketball is first and only. Like, they're the ballers that you want, right? This is going to come. They're going to live in the gym. They're going to do those. So I'm really excited to see what they do. I'm really excited to see how they bond together because they each are different players. Like, they each complement each other. Like, Kaylee's a crazy shooter, right? Amari can get in the paint, drive and kick. Jenna's a playmaker. Like, And then I got bigs that can do what they do on the block and follow up, you know, trail threes and whatnot. And so... They all complement each other, and we were very strategic in putting them together. Um, Jenna was an outlier because she came in half year and or mid year, and so. But she always, I mean, they've played together, so they kind of know each other already, and so they already complement each other. So I was, I was excited about that. Um, and they're all defensive kids. Like they love the girls. Until Trent <laughs> talks to them. No, <laughs> just I keep your know. husband away from them. I know, I know. Until Lee no, talks to them. No, but I love that they like when I ask a recruit, you know, what's your favorite part of your game, and they always get excited about defense. You can hear it in their voice. That's the type of players I want. Mm. So. All right, fair well, enough. Spencer would have been a good player for that was, you. That was my game, Amber. Yeah. That, that <laughs> Amber, was, you would have not recruited <laughs> that. That was, that was, that was three is and no D. <laughs> Let's go. It's not, no, no, no. Three all, D. All, that's all it. defense. <laughs> all defense and a lot of three pointers for sure. Amber and Amari Whiting are with us on BYU Sports Station. Uh, Amari, how do you feel about the chemistry of the team right now? How would you explain the team dynamic and, and how all of the women are getting along at this stage? Um, I would say we're getting along pretty well. I mean, obviously, we have. A bunch of new girls coming in but um, all these girls coming in are just very outgoing and energetic and 
I don't know. I feel like that the girls that are here right now are, would be very welcoming and very open. Um, I know that when I came in, I was a little nervous at first because, like, yeah, I've been around the girls all the time, but I wasn't, like, um, in their day-to-day -day stuff. And they were awesome with me, especially with my ACL process, like, just hyping yeah. me up and, you know, cheering me on as I was going through it. So I'm not too worried. I think our team chemistry will get there, but... I don't know. We might have to go on a couple team retreats. <laughs> <laughs> Those are always welcome. Absolutely. Speaking of your rehab and your ACL injury, uh, where are you in terms of getting back to 100%? Um, I'm about three months out. So I just started running and doing some like layups and stuff, and I should be able to start cutting here soon. But um, yeah, I'm almost there. So. But a little bit longer until you can play defense, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the trainer today, can we start defensive slides? Like that's part a huge part of her game. And so I'm eager to get that part back and established. And you're in the weight room, as we can tell, which is awesome. I um, looked way more than that. She, <laughs> she, okay, she will, like, play around like that, but she right. definitely does not <laughs> live like that. I She's live. more of a cardio girl. No, I live. <laughs> I live. We're going to need video evidence since we just saw from you. How much roster uh, sort of makeup is, is finalized versus what you still need to do because... The Big 12 rules are a little different in football and men and women's basketball where you have a commitment the entire time to that player. Mm -hmm. They're at BYU. So you have to make sure, hey, we're committed to you for this whole time as opposed to what it used to be, which is kind of year to year. Uh, we're finalizing as a staff a couple last little, tying up a couple of last little spots. Um, but, yeah, other than that, we're pretty set waiting to hear for Lauren. But other than that, yeah. Okay, so wait, waiting to hear on Lauren, but not, like, super active in the transfer portal as currently constitute, like it's quiet um, I have a visit set up tomorrow. Okay. So <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I have a call today. Like, no, I, you, can't, you, can't stop, you can't stop recruiting. And I've learned through this process that, like, I'm a loyal person, so I go all in, right? Um, that person might choose somebody else, so I need to go all in, but then have others in the mix, too. You go all and in you, on several. Yeah, and you yeah. have to. You have to create those relationships. Sure. And so that's what I'm learning very quickly. Well, I mean, yeah, what we what we've seen over the years is like even if a player says no to you once or even twice, the door they could, could come potentially back. still well, open yeah, again. Yes. Yeah. So in the portal, yes. like there was a girl that we just went after, um, but she actually went and chose the school that was her second choice, right? When she got down to the end, and I'm sitting there watching this kind of unfold, and I can't blame her, but also I'm learning the relationships; those are important, and so mm -hmm. they'll always come back. Like if it doesn't work here, it might work here, and so. Yeah, I got to. Clarence Titake has been great about this, where he still loves them if they don't pick him initially, but sometimes they come back around, right? So you got to be uh, ready for that. All right. We're all about establishing good vibes and good karma on this show. Amber, you've okay. been the recipient of the karma, your team. You've won yeah. some big games. We're going to give both of you some BYU Sports yes. Nation karma. <laughs> Amari, specifically so that you can heal ACL, up. Good luck. Get going. Months, okay. Exciting. Also, so you won't call your coach mom again. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Do we know when the league's going to announce the schedule, by the way? Hopefully soon, because okay. I heard uh, some people talking about the guys this is supposed to come, like, within the next couple of I don't know, days, weeks, I don't know. Okay, so little, little nugget, hopefully. thank you. You've got a standing invitation when the schedule does come you out to come, come back, on the show and discuss it. We, we have it uh, Big 12 meetings in two weeks in Kansas, so I'm headed there to go take care of that. Let's go. Awesome. Yeah. Wow, you're really super busy, aren't you? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> There's no off-season. Yeah. That's why yeah. you need the karma. I'll come hide here every once yeah. in a while. Good luck. Always welcome to both of you. Amari, great thank to you. have you in the studio Thanks, as well.